Okay, in this video we're going to talk about IOC container. Before we talk about it, let us try to understand the term inversion of control. Before we talked about dependency injection, we had our class within which we had defined its dependencies. So in here, the class itself is managing its own dependencies, not by a third party tool. Or in other words, we can say that the class is controlling its own dependencies. But whereas with dependency injection, we had introduced a new constructor in our class and then we are trying to inject its dependencies from a third party tool. In our case, the third party tool is the Spring Framework. So this time, the class itself is not controlling its dependency, but the control has been inverted and a third party tool is given the responsibility of managing its dependencies. Now this phenomenon is called inversion of control. There are many different design patterns with which we can accomplish inversion of control and dependency injection is one of such techniques. We're not really concerned about other techniques that existed. They are not of relevance for our course and they're not relevant for Spring Framework. So we're just going to focus on dependency injection pattern. Now let us try to explore what is an IOC container. If you're aware of EJB technologies, you probably know that we have to install an application container or in other words, an application server. An application server in case of EJB is simply the implementation of Java to Enterprise Edition specifications to handle the life cycle of Enterprise Java Beans. And Spring is no exception. We do require a container to manage Spring Beans. But unlike an EJB container, Spring container is pretty lightweight and we don't have to install it as a separate software, but it would be created on the fly when we run the program. And the instruction that is going to help us create this IOC container is this. If you remember, we had this instruction in our main class. So what this instruction does is it will parse through all the list of beans defined in our XML document and is going to make them part of an IOC container. And this instruction will not only create the IOC container, but also instantiate all the beans defined in the XML. In our case, we had a couple of beans defined and our animal and bean. After that, Spring will also take care of creating connections between these beans. In our case, we're trying to inject the animal object into bean and now we can say that there is a connection between animal and bean. The bean is going to depend on animal and so is injected. This phenomenon of connecting to beans is called wiring. Now going forward, our examples are going to get a little complex and so there will be more beans defined in our XML and there are going to be a lot of connections between them. And after all this happens with the above instruction, we can use that context object to get the desired bean to call its methods. And once we're done with whatever we had to do, Spring will also take care of destroying all these objects. In other words, the purpose of container is to manage the life cycle of all the beans existed in our application. Well, I'm trying to put things very simple in here, but there is a lot going on within a bean life cycle. In fact, we had a chapter dedicated just to talk about bean life cycle. So hold on until we reach that point and then we'll have even more insights. But for now, this is a quick overview of what is an IOC container. See you in my next video.